Welcome, folks, to um, a another Friday dev stream with uh, Tomo, myself, uh, to discuss uh, systems design uh, related issues uh, to uh, uh, with respect to Epic Tavern. So. Um, <coughs> We're in the uh, in the middle of a, a period of time, where as we uh, as a kind of an update period, where we're trying to uh, get a number of features done uh, for the next patch. <clears throat> um, and the the kind of the the basic idea between the or the overall idea is that will be that this update will be containing a reduction in the. Uh, Overall number of skills, uh, which by itself doesn't sound like such a serious update, um, but that update uh, lines up with a increase in the number of encounter types. Um, you know, the let's see, yeah, the, if you guys have been keeping up with things at all, um, then this I'm sure this diagram is very familiar to you at this point. Um, but just a quick once over for. Uh, this next update is to go from what we have, which is combat survival social mind encounters, um, and something like three times the number of these skills. And if you think this, see this outer ring here, uh, that's the that'll be the new uh, uh, skill system. But we would have these four encounter types, and we had triple this number of skills. And uh, if you've been playing the game, there's a uh, a lot of noisiness. Uh, there's a you know that that large number of skills and the small uh, number of encounter types uh, kind of creates uh, some disassociation between um, the choices you make uh, when your characters level up and um, and the kind of impact they have on success or failure. So this next the this next update um, most stuff is. The stuff theoretically, I mean, it kind of works, but um, in order for it to for the game to actually uh, fully function, requires us to go through all of the encounters. Uh, something I've talked about in the past called the all stages audit and update. Um, basically, we're reviewing all two thousand of our encounters and modifying their data so as to match this new new state. And the new state of things has this uh, thirty six skills and 11 encounter types um, configuration. <clears throat> and um, uh, having more encounter types uh, allows kind of the body language of, um, of, the, of the UI uh, when parties are out adventuring. Uh, to one, it'll, it'll like better connect what's going on to the player um, that uh, rather than it there being a survival encounter, that it is a physical feat, a disaster encounter, or an exploration encounter. Uh, the same goes for mind being puzzle, knowledge, or subtlety. Basically, the kind of thing that the party is facing has a little more systemic definition. Um, and, you know, so part of the process of going through all the encounters is identifying which of the old encounter, old mind encounters, uh, what which of these three categories they fit in. Uh, once we're done with all that, we'll probably find that some of these encounter types are are, are you know potentially severely underserved. Um, um, I mean, sorry, I had a uh, I didn't have the uh, channel open. I realized it's still a. Uh, Consistent mistake of mine is not to have the uh, Twitch chat visible in case anyone had something to say. If uh, someone did recently say anything, I probably missed it. And if you if you could ask again, if you had any questions, I'm looking now. Um, anyways, <clears throat> the the feeling that uh, our hope is that the feeling for the player uh, with these fewer skills uh, gives the level up choices they make in terms of assigning skill points to their characters um, that that feels much more connected with their strengths and weaknesses and then additionally what a character is good at through its skills uh, has much stronger connected tissue to the uh, to the written word of our of our storytelling system 
so wait, 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 wait let's see. Today is dev stream. Friday, I called party dashboard. Uh, the reason for this is that um, one of the things that one of the things we're working on right now is some of the, some of what we're doing for this update ultimately uh, represents uh, setting things up for the update that'll come after. Um, if uh, if we think about the update in December as creating a system where each of the characters can roll individually during the uh, during uh, uh, questing and uh, when they encounter various things, uh, this next step. Uh, increases the number of encounter types and reduces the skills so that that makes better sense and the update that will come after that uh, let's say you know uh, a end of April early May time frame that one uh, will be about skill specializations and uh, uh, kind of completing or following through with uh, the supply um, and starvation system that we're putting into place but in order to have the skill special well I say the word skill specialization that as if that's all we're doing but this uh, this diagram here kind of talks a little briefly about what the structure of the skill specializations are so you can see here that we have this mind encounter class and inside that encounter class we have three encounter subtypes subtlety knowledge and puzzle and then uh, in this diagram I, I took the subtlety encounter type and broke it and then it this describes the three skills that characters can have that um, that have an affinity for subtlety. It's worth noting if you have any mind skills of any sort, they contribute uh, to any of the mind subcategory uh, subtype uh, encounter subtypes. However, if you have skill points in alignment with the encounter subtype, uh, you'll get a bonus. And then more importantly, in the for every skill uh, that you've the ten once you put ten points into a given skill. Uh, you will be given an option of choosing a specialization for that skill and um, specializations unlock special abilities um, or passive benefits. Uh, those special abilities, some of them are things that add to the list of things you can do during, uh, during an encounter. Um, so that would be like um, right now you can choose to approach the encounter aggressively or um, or with precision, for example. And by making one of those choices, you're sacrificing for aggressiveness. You're sacrificing a uh, chance of, of the kind of quality of your performance, um, but you're gaining uh, more skill point power, skill power points to uh, to try to contribute towards the success of the encounter. And then for precision, you're increasing the chance of, of success at the cost of the, your overall power. So in the logic of subtlety and the skill illusion, uh, you know, the special, the skill specializations unlock special actions. Uh, one that can be used during a social disease, deceive event action. So trick would be, and trick's not maybe a great word, but I was kind of just quickly doing it for the stream. But um, so if you chose trick as the illusion skill specialization, it would give you a special ability that you could use in social deceive encounters. And part of that is just the the kind of narrative of um, of the illusion skill has some social footprint, and so this gives you this will give a character who may be fundamentally uh, a mind focused character. Um, hello, hey Cloudy, how's it going? Uh, Cal Vinny, how's it going? I'm I'm glad. Uh, um, I hope that the that the panel at Comic Fest last weekend was was to your liking. I'm glad to see you're here. And catfish, uh, the chart has matured, and it's hard to comment until there's been time to look it over. Oh yeah, well, I mean, a lot of these diagrams are really, I mean, they lock in, they lock into each other in sort of unobvious ways, um, and you know, I'm still trying to figure out how best to describe how it all connects together. I mean, I've been, I've been kind of like 
telling the same story now for a few months at least. But now that we're actually getting on the doorstep of it actually getting into the uh, into the build, um, well, one, that's pretty exciting, and two, uh, I don't have the luxury, like, uh, or I, I need to get even more practice and faster practice in order to uh, be able to describe why. Here, I'm gonna quickly drop this into here. Um, so like I was saying though about these skill specializations uh, you'll get a choice of three uh, if you chose trick that would be your way of saying that I'd like this character to have some exposure or some strength to apply to social encounters or at least in specific social deceive encounters uh, choosing magic hide which is you know stealthy magic I guess I don't know, call it shadow magic um, allows, uh, gives you an action that you can use during a subtlety, a mind subtlety encounter. Um, so that's basically saying that I'm going to get an extra ability for this thing that I'm good at. It's kind of like doubling down. It's like, I already have a bunch of points in illusion, let's say, and I would like to be even better at my, you know, even better at, at the, at performing in these encounter types. So uh, the third one is where it gets interesting, though, and it's kind of where I was trying to get this conversation to, to jump over the next part of the explanations. Uh, hide from combat. Uh, if, you choose, if you choose this uh, skill specialization, it gives you an option during the adventure phase of, the, of questing, or the non-encounter-based time. Uh, where you can spend spirit and reduce the chances of encountering uh, a combat encounter uh, in the with a, in a certain time frame. And with that, I'll jump over to this image here. This 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 is a, a mock-up of the of the state of questicution uh, or adventure mode. I keep trying to. Questicution is the old jargon for what the party did when is out adventuring, and I've been. Very much trying to shift that to something a little more layman's terms, like uh, adventure mode. It's not as uh, like kind of techno goofy as uh, questicution, though. So what you're seeing here are, uh, first of all, a number of. There are some core changes to what you've what you've been seeing uh, in the game currently, uh, just in the way these uh, portraits have been configured. Uh, before, the uh, the health and the spirit bars were underneath, and uh, the overall size of them was a little bit boosted up. We had to kind of shrink them down to get some more information around there. Uh, and some of the things that you're seeing that have been squeezed in are this. Is that is that real? Here, I'm just gonna make this really big and just for now. There's a hunger, and a button, and a a, st a hunger status. Uh, bit of information that we're going to be um, displaying. And now it's worth noting when um, let's see if we find another screenshot. So when you're in an encounter and basically uh, when the roll buttons appear and um, uh, um, you know and the encounter tells you what type it is and displays the setup text uh, that that is, I don't have a better word for it, but I call that in encounter. Um, mostly because in my brain, the logic is that everything outside of that is actually adventure mode or a, a period, a, a, a mode that the game is in that allows the player to uh, choose at any point to do any number of these adventure actions. And so while the while the party's traveling on the world map, uh, Catfish asks, so there will be advanced paths for the skill trees. Basically, yeah. Or, I mean, another way of looking at it is that for every 10 points you put into a skill, you can kind of buy a, a feat. Um, or, or you can unlock an ability. Um, but yeah, I think the, the kind of kind of the larger strategy of that is that each of those individual skills, in some ways because we have fewer of them, 
uh, we felt the desire to kind of keep all the complexity we kind of put in, which isn't which isn't a great way of approaching systems design in general. Um, uh, but it's hard it's hard for me not to say that we don't have like you know strong sometimes positive feelings about biting off more than we can chew and dealing with more complexity than we can handle. Um, but in this particular case, it also serves a number of uh, other very important um, uh, functions. By having those skill specializations break into three choices, um, one of the problems with the game is that um, the characters themselves are built out of these skills. Uh, but what those characters can influence in the game, uh, unless we... Uh, we need some way to communicate that to the player, and it'd be even better if the player could choose what that way, what that is. Uh, and we also kind of really like this idea that I could make my characters better for encounters. I could make them better at traveling the world on, you know, traveling the road as a party, you know, camping from night to night, or etc. Um, I could make that character better at uh, in the tavern, um, and that they're that they get options uh, in the character action panel and or simply get bonuses when it comes to serving them drinks or food or um, uh, some of the, I mean, something I think that we want to try to pull off at some point because one of the original, uh, eh, a piece of the design for the drink chain combos, uh, which we haven't implemented yet, um, and to be fair, depending on how things go, may never, uh, involved a lot of kind of like uh, maneuvers or, or uh, events that could get triggered by various levels of drunkenness. Claffy says, meat popsicle though. <laughs> and Catfish says, it makes sense the higher the points that are allocated to a skill path. Yeah, and it, you know, it, feel, it feels good in that regard, but once you're putting those skills into those characters, especially after you put 10, 20, 30 skill points into various skills, which by then those characters are pretty high level, um, this allows them to meaningfully grow and in a way of your choosing. So, uh, you know, my, the way I like to, to level up a fire mage is, uh, pro personally, I'll even say, I, I probably would prefer to level up the, and choose the skill special, specialization of fireball. I mean, not fireball, burning hands, because uh, I'm generally pumping a lot of points into combat. The Fire Mage is great at ranged combat, uh, gets a lot of bonuses. Um, and um, when faced with the skill specialization choice, I would choose Burning Hands because Burning Hands allows me to use a special ability in a melee combat encounter um, that will cost some amount of spirit but will give me like a 30% boost to my, to my skill power. Now, it is worth noting, probably in the first implementation uh, of this wheel, when you guys get a chance to actually start playing it, the having skill points that are in alignment with an encounter type will, will be worth double. So if I, had, uh, if I had 10 skill points in mind and it was a subtlety encounter and all 10 of those points were in illusion, that would be worth 20 points of skill power for that encounter and it'd be worth 10 points for knowledge and 10 points for puzzle. And so the same thing goes with combat, except combat's only broken into the two ranged and melee types. And then now my fire mage is maybe different than the person's fire mage who chose fireball because uh, the way they like to level this character up is to make it a ultra sharp, ultra specialized tool for ranged combat. All right, so to get back to, to this this uh, this stuff here, um, actually, let me see. I'm gonna paste in. Let's see if this works. So this is the current state of. of supplies. And I don't know why this font, this text is so white or light gray, that's weird. Could be from where I pasted it from, I guess. 
All right, so now these numbers are more there just to give some specific uh, descriptions. The actual numbers that we use in game uh, differ for a number of reasons, uh, but this should give, this should describe what, what, what you can expect to start seeing once we actually get these, uh, um, the supply system working. And so, um, Let's say over the course of a day, 50 units of time are used up. And uh, as you use up, as you use timer, you know, you travel over the course of the day and do encounters, anything that starts costing the time of the day, uh, you lose spirit. And spirit loss due to time is 4% of your total spirit lost for every five units of time, which really means 10 times we're going to take a look, or 10, there are going to be 10 times spread out evenly over the course of the day where we're going to take 4% of your spirit. And um, also, over the course of that day, you're going to uh, accumulate four stacks of hunger. Starting with the moment you wake up, you'll have one unit of hunger. A stack of hunger increases the spirit loss due to time by 1% for each of those 10 times we look. So you'll lose 5% of your spirit 10 times if you have one unit of hunger, 6%, 7%, 8%, 9% if you had, um, if you had five stacks of hunger. Um, For every stack of hunger a character has at the end of a day, it reduces the sleep spirit recovery by 10%. And that's also worth noting that... Oh, that's, that's a piece of information that's missing like this. So when your characters spend the night, or just they go to bed, and then they wake up the next morning, they're going to recover 50% of their spirit. And, um, and then, of course, for every stack of hunger they have, when they actually go to sleep, it'll be a big chunk of that recover spirit recovery will be, will be lost to you. Um, every stack of hunger past four equals one stack of starvation, and every stack of starvation will, will cause a minus 20% maximum hit point loss. And once you have 0% max health, you're going to be put into a dying by starvation state. And if you don't rectify that by the end of the day, they will die. Of course, if they get one more starvation stack, that will also result in automatic death. So basically, if someone was dying and start dying by starvation, uh, you'd have to be you'd have to start feeding them immediately uh, to get their to get to their their 20% max hit points. And if you let that situation persist for any reasonable amount of time, they're going to be toast. Um, and then to add to that, the whole the whole reason for all this is that one click of supply consumption, which will be that this this little button up here, will reduce hunger stacks by one. And each of those clicks, by default, will be five supplies. Now, Cloffy asks, so if I use a team of low spirited members, do they get to sleep faster than others, or am I in charge of when they sleep? So, the uh, you will be in charge of when they go to sleep. If you wanted to, you could go to sleep the moment you wake up. Uh, and that's uh, another important piece of this diagram. So um, this area down below the portraits, um, that's what we're calling the party dashboard. And as you can see, it kind of tracks certain things that are happening in the quest, like how much loot you've gotten, how much XP, uh, any items that you found along the way. Uh, I'm leaning close to the camera because my eyes are bad and I'm trying to read the text that's on this on the screen. Um, it also shows you what day it is, uh, the name of the day, what you know, it, it, Monday afternoon gives you kind of a homey uh, description of what's going on. It'll tell you distance travel and it'll show you how much supplies you have. And of course this food stuff's eight would then be, you know, five would get subtracted every time. It's worth noting you're free to feed your characters as or they're free to eat whenever they want to. Um, and every time you click that button, you'll lose five supplies. Um, except if they don't have any hunger, um, that may be wasted. Although we are considering when a person has no hunger, if you eat a meal, that you might get a buff, debuff, an effect put on the character that maybe slows you down a little bit, but kind of makes you happier. Um, I think someone said fat and happy as a as an effect, but um, um, that that's like a classic situation where um, 
um, we, you know, you could set it up so that clicking the food, the eating button when you have no hunger just doesn't eat. Um, but as much as as much as possible, we want this uh, this game to be like a toy you can play with. Wait. Uh, Cloudy, you said you're doing the same. Uh, I must have missed exactly what I was saying when you uh, when you posted that. Um, so I don't know exactly what you meant by that. Um, the party dashboard, I, I love the way it looks, and um, you know, uh, I think in these streams, I've gotten in the habit of always moving the thing I actually want to talk about to the end of a description every step I take. And so, um, you know, this middle part here uh, kind of talks about. Um, you know what's been going on with the quest so far but this part over here to the right you see those buttons that say party option um, so, so again this is just a mock-up but those those buttons will actually uh, when things are all said and done will say things like uh, make camp uh, stop and rest uh, stop and scour uh, scavenge for supplies um, depending on what adventure actions you've unlocked with the characters that you brought along for the uh, ride, they might say things like first aid, which might allow you to stop and try to heal some lost hit points for a character. Just another reason why starvation reduces max hit points, by the way, because we don't want you to be able to heal starvation the same way you heal, like getting a you know a arrow in the thigh. Um, but these adventure options uh, will be available to you at any time while out in the field, except for when an encounter occurs. So, you know, when that when that kind of um, uh, voice uh, what is the voice bubble pops out of the party icon and shows what icon encounter is going to be, um, and that setup shows up and the the roll buttons appear, uh, it's during that during that encounter. Uh, obviously, you're not you don't have control over the party as much. Well, you don't have control over what the party does because they're either being attacked by monsters or run into some some situation of some sort. Um, you know, just to kind of talk a little bit more about this supply system, um, the idea is we want to create this kind of um, escalating bad news. Oh, you're also looking close to the monitor to see the picture. <laughs> And so I'm, I'm 45 now, and um, uh, one of the things I learned about aging past 40 is the, the minimum distance uh, that you can focus on starts to get longer and longer as you age. Um, and that's, I think, uh, I think it's due to like a, 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 a toughening or stiffening of your lens. And so, of course, the muscles that are, that are pulling it to, to, to focus on things or releasing that pull... Um, um, can't stretch the lens as much as it used to, and so uh, of course, if the lens is 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 allowed to be viewing it, you know, it's at the roundest, um, it'll it'll magnify the most, right? And so the flatter you make it, the less it'll magnify. Anyways, learn a new thing some of the days. Oh yeah. <laughs> Is that Sarah? Uh, Sarah recommends that I uh, zoom into the dock. And hey, you know, that that's not such a bad idea. <laughs> How about that, guys? Oh, and it even doesn't get overlapped by my uh, by the uh, camera portrait thing in the uh, Twitch stream. Um, so these party options are going to be a big deal going forward. Um, I think it's. You know, we were excited to go to individual roles um, because it it lets the player feel like they're making some choices during an, uh, uh, a given encounter. Um, and naturally, you know, if you've been with us since launch, uh, you'll remember that um, uh, at the launch of Early Access, the game was a lot more incomplete than it is now. Um, and the whole experience of questing was um, uh, you had pretty much no... Uh, room for interaction. Um, and that, that wasn't where we were trying to head, but that is where things were when we got, when we started early access. And I think that, I mean, just in terms of like talking about uh, early access and uh, Epic Tavern and our experience with it, um, I think unlike a lot of other devs out there, we, I don't know why we weren't more scared. We should have been, um, but we weren't 
we didn't really see a lot of fear or we didn't feel a lot of fear about um, having the game be incomplete and the stress and the hecticness of developing in front of the audience. Uh, we weren't like when I say we weren't afraid of it, I'm really what it was is we were kind of uh, excited to try that out. Um, and in hindsight, I'm not 100% sure why, because it's not like we understood what we were, we didn't, like this is our first foray into into early access and this kind of like open beta and, you know, uh, update every month or two type of rhythm. Um, you know, before September of 2017, we weren't doing that. We had, none of us had had experience doing that. Um, and, you know, I think that we also just had, I mean, we had a pretty positive attitude about, about the fact that we can have to interact a lot more with our users, but we just kind of like that idea too. And it's worth noting that lots of our peers, you know, have a lot of hesitation with respect to that. There's a lot, you know, we see a lot of stories where, where the audience for a game can become the game's worst enemy. Um, and we also see a lot of situations where devs who um, maybe aren't taking the public nature of their interactions seriously enough get themselves into pretty hot water. Um, and uh, I think for a lot of our peers that aren't haven't done it before, like like we hadn't, uh, that that comes with a lot of hesitation and 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 fear. Um, yeah, it's been I mean it's been like a year and a half since we've since we've uh, been out on early access and the games come a long way and we're hoping in the next maybe four to six months that uh, we can get to full release. Um, uh, the way the way we want to describe what we're getting to is a complete experience for you guys. So until there is a complete experience, we, you know, we're not going to allow the game to go to full release. But once it's there, and I'm sure we'll have conversations with you guys about this along the way, uh, we really do want to kind of... Um, if anything, to prove to ourselves that we aren't going to be in early access forever, uh, move to move to full release. However, uh, as I always say when when talking about moving to full release, uh, under no circumstance uh, do we plan on uh, discontinuing uh, improving the game and growing the game once we get there. Um, it'll just be a way of us saying that finally what we put together represents something that is complete for a player. Um, and part of that completeness is, uh, you know, a lot of people uh, associated uh, what they saw on early access release for the game as a almost like kind of an idle game or a clicker of sorts, uh, where you just kind of click on all the characters and farm up a relationship. Oh, Catfish Water Dancer says something. Will there be a store or stores in the tavern or in town where supplies can be purchased? Will parties be able to stay at an inn or a rival tavern if they're far away from home? I ask because by bringing supplies into the gameplay, you're inching closer to real time and real life situations. Yeah, and we've definitely talked about it. Now, um, a store in the tavern one way or another is just flat out. Uh, uh, um, uh, from our point of view, it's something that we need to add for the game's basic functionality. Um, uh, you know, for those of you familiar with the game, you know that, that equipment is in a pretty bad place right now. Well, bad isn't the right word. Just a, uh, severely underdeveloped, maybe I'll put it. And, um, and F, our future plans for equipment um, don't involve a system that's severely underdeveloped, basically. I think uh, everyone on the team is a big fan of loot and equipment and gearing up characters. Uh, we all have, you know, derived a great deal of joy over the course of our lives playing RPGs and and um, and uh, in engaging with those kinds of systems. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna let's actually I think one of these dev streams actually has a brief description of it. Okay, yeah, so just a quick aside. Oh, uh, wait, and to answer Catfish Water Dance's question, though, so aside from we're, get, we're for sure going to have a store inside the tavern, um, the way we kind of want to approach that is uh, when you make camp or some of the social encounters you run into, do storytell like you find a tavern, uh, like you step in for a drink or two, or that you stop at the inn for the night. Um, and so as your accommodations, because of the randomly selected uh, make camp encounter, uh, as those accommodations improve, um, the spending the night 
uh, will come with uh, additional benefits. Uh, like uh, you, if you go to the inn before you leave, you know they they serve you some food, and so you won't start that turn with one unit of hunger. You won't have to use your supplies. Um, you know, if you find uh, just a crappy cave and it's rainy, uh, you're not going to recover as much spirit. Um, those make and break encounters, make and break camp encounters also, now they represent the end of the day for the party, but that's not the end of the time necessarily because you could theoretically make camp right away. Um, and, uh, and so there's another little piece of this puzzle that we're still trying to sort out exactly how we can accommodate some of our desires, but um, that how long, how long you travel in a given day is up to you now. You stop, you make camp. And so we're just trying to figure out if the game can tolerate you pushing uh, your, your march deeper into the night and what that really entails. Uh, what, is it, what does it do to the systems that we've devised so far? Um, but we're trying to create a, a feeling of where you can risk. You, you're taking risks and you're spending spirit um, but you're able to go further, maybe because you're at, you're running out of food. You're playing chicken with your with your with your low spirit values and your inability to recover. Um, as well as um, give you that little bit of extra space at the end of a day when you would have otherwise made camp right at the doorstep of the tavern. Now you can just finish it up and just make it to the tavern. Um, I think that'll be one one small frustrating thing we remove from the game, um, and then. Uh, so, so really the answer about the staying at the inn or arrival taverns is yes, loosely, um, but that there isn't necessarily a, a system in place that describes locations on the map that are things like inns. Um, that's definitely uh, some, some really exciting stuff we've talked a lot about, but uh, we don't think uh, we'll act upon before going to full release. But um, definitely after release, one of the things after release, we're really thinking very heavily that we'll, we'll dive into a lot of development with respect to uh, Steam Workshop tools. Um, I think uh, it's our aspiration to allow uh, players to basically remake all of Epic Tavern in, in whatever way they see, see fit. Um, but other pieces of, of work that we're almost certain to continue doing, provided the game doesn't flop too hard, because of course then you won't be able to pay for the development, um, is... Uh, um, oh wow, my brain just totally cleared out right there. Um, what was I actually in the middle of saying? Um, oh, is uh, a more nuanced, rich, deep character personality and intercharacter relationship system. Uh, we will have a very light duty one in place, one that is basically if characters are working together for a long time, they'll tend to like each other, and putting them on quests will give them a bonus. That's probably what will happen for full release. But what we want to get to eventually is almost like like a weird friendship simulator between the characters on your roster, or not friendship if, if things don't go right. Uh, and then another important piece of it, like I was just talking about, is this idea that we could really increase the feature set of the map itself and have all kinds of stuff like clicking on locations and sending parties there, generating quests because you want to explore someplace, or that this quest is really just going to that inn. Be because it's like a road trip and it's almost like a vacation. Uh, it's, it's entirely up to the player. It's like, hey, well, let's go visit the other other inn. And maybe we can even use our name generator and and uh, you know scatter a few randomly across the map and it becomes like a new place to meet people. I mean, who knows? All kinds of fun stuff relating to the map. Um, but that said, uh, there's another piece of my answer to you, Catfish. Uh, you were saying about uh, uh, stores in the town where supplies can be purchased. Uh, there's two pieces of that. One, uh, encounters out in the road that give you an option to trade money for supplies or items or whatever. Uh, wandering merchant idea. Uh, we're definitely very interested in that. As well as those wandering merchants occasionally coming into the tavern and uh, having something to offer you as the tavern owner, uh, like buying a certain number of stock from like a, uh, a type of food or drink you don't have accessible to you, um, uh, maybe an item or two or all any number of things potentially. Um, Cloudy says, hmm, like if you travel too long, could you get encounters that screw the team up because they're too exhausted due to not letting them sleep? 
And is there also different sleep types, like pitching tent is not as comfortable as sleeping at an inn or a cave. So definitely the last thing there, uh, we're going to be able to support that uh, through our through the different encounter encounters we have that are our make camp encounter type. So the last encounter of the day is a, is a specific type of encounter, and we write all of those to describe the, the act of going to bed or making camp. And so uh, along with those encounters, we're also going to you know, embed data into them that tell uh, the game how, much, how good a night's sleep they're going to get, um, and uh, um, you know, whether they have to consume supplies, whether they get some food for free, um, and depending, maybe it can also set us up for getting ambushed while you're asleep in an attack. Um, certainly the break camp encounter, which is the beginning of the day, um, will also come with the occasional like, oh no, rats got into our food. Um, um, oh, it's 4.53. And, um, or, or, oh no, we got woken up and we've been, we're being attacked. Uh, and you know, our game structure has very much been beginning of the day to the end of the day, and so we're still just trying to wrap our minds around how far you can push a party and what the negative consequences would be. Um, certainly, uh, you can imagine that uh, uh, if it is 4% 10 times in a normal day, but we really allow you to go 15, we allow you to go five more times of, um, of, of, of spirit loss, right? Uh, that would be 75% of your spirit loss just from traveling. And that's not including any of the things you run into because spirit can be lost as, as a form of damage uh, when you fail, um, or in particular when you fail mind and social stages. Now, there are a number of other situations that sometimes are written directly into encounters where we're, we're going to take spirit away from the parties, party members, um, but that, that'll depend directly on what's exactly happening in that text. Um, so yeah, there's kind there kind of will be different types of sleep. Um, uh, now, if you travel too long, you know you can you can get a bad night's sleep and have low spirit levels, and maybe it's like day two on a, on a quest path that's just been uh, one bad event after another, and the party maybe isn't well equipped to recover spirit because um, uh, certain social skill focus characters, their specializations uh, are like entertainment and performance based. Um, and they're, you know, they're all about taking a moment and recovering, getting into a better mood. Um, it's worth noting, you don't actually get any spirit back when you eat, you simply just counteract the hunger. Um, so sleeping and resting uh, and doing fun things, I guess, are all things that are going to be a necessary part of any given party's story on any given quest. Uh, that's something we like. We really like that a lot, by the way. This idea that there's happy, fun parts to the quest that that are driven by your characters. And if you bring no social focus characters, you won't have the specializations that unlock those adventure actions available to you. And that's kind of becomes like a choice you're making about that party. Um, you know, uh, same goes for the characters like rangers or any or mountaineers. Characters that have these like really uh, the, the skills that are related to survival or especially survival exploration. Uh, will give you skill specializations that allow you to uh, cope with lower supply situations or do better job of scout scavenging for supplies. Um, the the character choices, the class choices, and the skill level up choices you make, and the skill specializations you choose, uh, will have uh, uh, a significant impact on the the nature of the kind of the the story of that camping trip, so to speak. Uh, Catfish says, I believe the quality of accommodations afterwards indoors has a bearing on HP recovery. Um, yeah, HP recovery is a little tricky right now. I mean, right now we have a, a base amount that you recover, and uh, it doesn't it doesn't really vary. Out in the world, it doesn't really vary too much, but I think that we're going to want to treat it the same way for sure. <laughs> and you're welcome, Catfish. Um, but, uh... Yeah, and so uh, I've described all those things. Like, like in a nutshell, that kind of describes uh, the way the the work we're doing to set up for the next update, which is all about skill specializations, adventure actions, and supplies. Um, and so, if you guys have any specific questions about that, please feel free. Uh, but I'm going to spend the last few minutes of the stream just kind of doing a brief recap on uh, a conversation about future equipment systems we had. Uh, this is probably uh, at the beginning of uh, February. 
So this intermediate equipment systems design, uh, we want to uh, make the equipment the characters carry uh, important and meaningful, and that uh, something that's ever present on the player's mind in terms of what their characters are, are sporting gear-wise, um, and that it's part of the way you customize them into being the effective tools that you're trying to create. And so weapon slot, or at least what's held in the hand, uh, will be for combat. Um, and, and as you can see kind of some of, from some of the description here, actually, oh, I can also do this. Um, so all characters should have a weapon equipped. This is also why we would need a store in the tavern, so you can just buy up the basic version of different types of equipment and or weapons and give them to your characters right off the bat. And we'll probably have to, t we'll be tuning the game's difficulty with the assumption that everyone has a weapon. And this means now a character that has no combat skills can still contribute, potentially quite significantly, with this plus 10 here, to combat encounters. Um, it also means that the combat encounter difficulties will probably have to be boosted as a result of that. Um, but now everyone ha will have their weapon. You get to choose, you know, you'll choose whether they're ranged weapons or melee weapons with an understanding that uh, melee and ranged uh, encounters have been kind of at least in loosely equal uh, um, amounts that you'll be wanting to consider how, how your party can be, how effective your party is for both the melee encounters and the ranged encounters. Um, and uh, so in a lot of ways, what's held in the hand is combat, combat, combat. Uh, what is worn as armor, a single armor slot, uh, armor will reduce damage in uh, the damage you take. So, you know, we're kind of starting to make our way to a rule set where some of the the, the combat heavy characters can start potentially becoming tank-like. Um, you know, the some of the skill specializations we want to explore are things like taunt or things like protect or intervene. Um, these ideas where characters can have the damage taken them to themselves instead of to the and in the kind of conventional RPG sense, instead of you know, instead of the wizard taking the damage. Although in the case of Epic Tavern, it doesn't have to be a wizard. It could be a lore master. It could be a performer. It could be a diplomat. It could be all not, all manner of characters whose focus is not combat. Um, and then you know, some a, a little bit more uh, uh, thinking here in terms of uh, uh, whether or not we have the heavier armor impact your your spirit loss. Um, it's also worth noting uh, something about spirit that I haven't mentioned, but which might play out pretty significantly in the way the game goes, is that um, characters who use spirit or who are more mind and social focused, uh, characters who use magic, um, these characters will have much more spirit than other characters. Uh, but as you notice, a lot of the spirit loss from this from this kind of like supplies and starvation related system is all percentage based. Uh, however, the cost to execute uh, actions, uh, the special abilities in encounters or, or adventure actions cost uh, static amounts of spirit. And so those spellcasters can cast a lot more or use a lot more of their spirit. They'll have a lot more spirit as a in their in their bucket of spirit, so to speak. Um, but they very well may not like the idea of losing more percentage of spirit because of wearing heavier armor. And so it's kind of a way for our system to kind of mimic and say some of the same types of words that like Dungeons and Dragons did with its armor and its casters. And finally, an accessory slot. Um, we do want to get to a place where eventually we'll have more slots for character equipment and actually maybe even show a paper doll and allow you to kind of like drag equipment into boxes and stuff. That hasn't, it's going to be a while before that's a priority, um, but um, it's definitely, it's, it's in the cards provided uh, we're allowed to continue playing the deck. Um, so the accessory slot, though, would be items that you select that would have uh, bon give bonuses to survival, mind, and social. And so, depending on the special the specialty of that character class or the character, based on your your upgrading of that character or assigning skill points from level up to level up, uh, you can then double down and or hedge against weakness um, by choosing what's in the accessory slot. Um, you know, obviously, in this equipment structure. Um, uh, the weapon and combat has like a really strong expression, um, 
If you noticed in the in this encounter diagram, you'll see that combat actually has fewer encounter subtypes and more skills, by the way, per each of these subtypes. Um, in a weird sort of way, this reduction in complexity of the encounter combat encounter subtypes is 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 almost like a response to the fact that to some extent what you carry in your hands has to be combat focused and it really doesn't have to have to be um, but so much of the game tries to treat the different encounter types we have in as equitable a fashion as possible you know we want epic tavern to be a, an experience for the party that you send out there that covers social mental survival and combat all not not in precisely equal measures but that the game is about all of those things and and moving forward uh, with an update that'll that'll be coming out hopefully in let's say somewhere between two and three three-ish weeks let's say um once this is all in there there'll be so many more encounter types um and so in a lot of ways like um oh, i'm tired today i think i just i totally lost lost that sentence too um I was out late, pretty late last night. Oh, there's a fun. Sad. All right, to get back onto the rails, uh, simply put that uh, the equipment system doesn't have to treat all the encounter types as equally as the actual encounter system because the actual encounter system in some ways underserves combat. Uh, Partly because we knew some of these other systems were going to have to have slightly different focuses. And um, I think with that statement, I will close down the dev stream. Uh, I hope uh, you found what I had to share interesting. And if you guys have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask them in chat. Also, if you haven't gone to our Discord channel, I highly recommend it. It is a great place to continue the discussion of Epic Tavern, narrative games, game design in general, um, as well as the game industry in general. Um, Catfish says, here's a question from left field regarding magic weapons. Do they consume spirit during combat? That's a good question. I mean, I mean, generally no, but, but what if one did, what, what, what would you think that that weapon is about? Right. Um, uh, Oh, I mean, because I immediately went, my mind immediately went to something that like life like steals parts of your soul in order to get the power to use it. And that every encounter, right, that's a combat encounter. If you have, if you have that weapon equipped, it'll be like minus 10% spirit or something. That'd be, that'd be, that'd be kind of a fun, like that character now is so much, so interesting, right? It's like, he's like a, an Elric of some sort. Um, oh yeah. And, uh, okay. And, uh, the process of stealing life force that's necromancy it is it is totally <laughs> um all right I need to... so uh, i'm gonna uh give a shout out to the the people in the channel and give you all a big thank you uh we have active energy banana nanana -nan, calvini underscore catfish water dance Chef Q underscore Clowfy. I wonder if the underscore is indicative of a bot of some sort, huh? Probably. Uh, Commander Root, Pulitzai, Positivity Bot, which is almost certainly a bot. Ted, the Wrong House, and Will Dragon You. Thank you so much for uh, coming and watching the dev stream today. And um, I will be back on next week. Uh, if you want to continue having conversations um, about Epic Tavern and game design and systems design in general. Uh, there are dev chat sessions on our Discord channel twice a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And um, I think with that, I'm signing off and I will see you guys next time.